To be independent does not mean you're alone. Working is one. On the contrary, it means you are committed to working with everyone. The system seems dysfunctional. It seems like all they're doing up there in Ottawa is fighting with each other. And there's a disconnect. We don't feel like the people in Ottawa are connected to us, the people. Wilson Raybould and Jane Philpott will run in the upcoming federal election as independent candidates. The two former Liberal cabinet ministers made back-to-back -back announcements in each of their respective ridings earlier this afternoon, promising to do politics differently. Both women quit cabinet over the SNC-Lavalin controversy. Wilson Raybould alleged members of the Prime Minister's inner circle inappropriately pressured her to intervene in a criminal case against the engineering giant. They were later expelled from caucus by the Prime Minister, who said they had broken his trust. The CBC's David Cochran has more on the announcements. Hey, David, great hey. to see you. So let's talk a bit about what they said when they made these announcements. Yeah, it was an interesting day for Canadian politics. Maybe not such a good day for conventional wisdom in Ottawa, because I think a lot of people in this town thought for sure they were going to go to the Greens. You know, it's a progressive party with a lot of similar uh, you know policies. There have been a lot of conversations with Elizabeth May and the Green Party about going there. But, you know, as they have from the beginnings in, in the S. Lavalin controversy, Wilson Raybould and Phil Pot, they're sticking together. I mean, they went out of cabinet together, they went out of caucus together, and they're going to stay side by side at least until the fall. Because what became manifestly clear throughout this entire controversy is that there was a collision between how they want to conduct politics and how parties conduct politics. Because as they went into battle with the prime minister and his staff, it did significant damage um, uh, to, to the Liberal Party. And so today, the announcement that they would run as independents in the fall, not that they're done with the Liberal Party, they are done with all parties. This is what they had to say today. The message I received was clear. Clear how we need to do politics differently. That partisanship is trumping principle, that exclusion is trumping inclusion, and the lack of diversity of voices was simply unacceptable. And there is too much power in the center. There is no longer a political party telling me what to say. There's no longer a political staffer telling me how to vote. There are no longer corporate lobbyists that are influencing the direction that I would go. The only people that are the boss of me right now are you. And Vashi, there's a couple of other interesting things in their speeches, which were remarkably similar, covered a lot of the same ground, simultaneous, near simultaneous events. One was still going on uh, as, the, as the second one began, but almost like a call for other independents to run and rise up across the country. If they're talking about a transformation of Canadian politics, very idealistic. Not sure how practical it is. Independents tend not to do great in this country. Party machines exist for a reason. Uh, but at least for now, they're going to be seeking re-election in October without the backing of a party. And that's going to be a, a tough one for and them. And we're going to be speaking to Eric Grenier in a few, few moments about the, exactly. the chances they have uh, uh, running as independents. But let's delve in a bit more into the Green Party yeah. aspect of this. Because as you mentioned, that was sort of the consensus until our colleague Hannah Thibodeau found out this weekend that, no, they're not going to the Green Party. They addressed that to a certain degree in their announcements today, both of them saying that they see a natural ally in Elizabeth May and the Greens on climate change, but they stopped short, obviously, of joining the party. A bit more on that. Yeah, they came to praise Elizabeth May, but not to join her. I mean, the conversations <laughs> on this continued right up until Friday, and Hannah, as you said, she broke the story on, on Sunday night that they would not be joining the Greens, and now we know they're running as independents. But to give you an idea of just how serious Liz May was about getting them to come join the caucus, because look, she doubled her caucus today with Paul Manley being sworn in and, and taking a seat in Parliament. She could have doubled it again to four, which is quite a Silicon Valley growth rate that she didn't get, but May was so determined to get them that in her conversations with Wilson Raybould and with Phil Pott, she even opened the door to giving up her job to them, one of them, if they wanted it. Here's what she said today. I said to Jody in our first conversation, you know, are you interested in being leader of the Green Party? I think that'd be a great idea. She said no. So I really don't think you can keep that. That uh, there's not a lot here to find that isn't on the surface. You were serious. In yes. Order to she yes. Have given up the leadership. Yes. And you do yes. Okay with that? Why not? Why? I want the best possible government for Canada. I want the most Greens elected as possible. I think she's a very impressive and qualified person who's shown herself to have massive integrity in the face of inappropriate pressure. That Did said, you the same offer to Jane? that said, neither of them were interested in taking on leadership roles. 
I don't know if I've ever seen a federal leader so casually just saying, hey, my job can <laughs> be up for grabs very quickly if you want it. But look, we've known uh, Elizabeth May, uh, this will be her last election as the federal green leader. She has made that very clear. But she says she wants to stay on as an NDP, uh, sorry, as an MP, not an NDP MP. <laughs> and that she wants to make sure that whoever would succeed her as leader is someone she can work with. So she has been feeling people out about this, but she put it on the table in these discussions as a serious overture that if they were ambitious and wanted to run a party, she would not stand in the way. She was that determined to grow the green movement, but she didn't get the yes. Yeah, and interestingly, they both said no. I know. Yeah, right. well, it's it's part of the brand, I think, right now, that when you are out for speaking, as they say, their truth and being independent, you kind of got to stay independent in the short term. It would have been difficult for them to go right to another party. All right, thanks for the update, you got it. David. That's the CBC's David Cochran. So what kind of odds do Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott face this fall? How often do in independent MPs find success in Canadian elections? Joining me now to discuss from Toronto is Greg Lyle, owner of Innovative Research Group, and with me here in studio, the CBC's Eric Grenier. Hi to both of you. Great to see you. Hello. Uh, let me start with you, Eric. Mm -hmm. That basic question about the kind of shot independents have in federal elections. I know you've crunched the numbers. What did you find? Well, historically, uh, when we've seen an MP who was elected under a party banner and then tries to get reelected as an independent, only one third of the time have they won throughout history. And if we look back since the Second World War, when uh, party uh, politics was a bit more entrenched, that's only about one in four. So the odds just on that level are not very good for an independent candidate. Also uh, depends, of course, the profile of those candidates, why they have decided to leave a party and run as an independent, which might give a better chance to uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. But historically speaking, uh, in most uh, incumbent MPs in this position have lost. Greg, let's delve a little bit into the differences between the two ridings and the two situations that each women, woman might face. Uh, first of all, Jane Philpott, her riding, what are the chances of success there, do you think, for an independent versus the one, uh, the riding in Vancouver, obviously? Sure. She's in a, a very tricky spot. It's a riding that was not won by a large margin in the last election. The Conservatives were quite close. Uh, the Conservatives seem to be on a bit of a roll in the 905. The other issue she has is that she's in a huge media market, the largest media market in the country. And her ability to get attention in the campaign is going to be relatively limited. What do you think, Eric? I think I, I agree that that riding is going to be uh, difficult for uh, Jane Philpot. Uh, it was a race between the Conservatives and the Liberals. They took about 92% of the vote last time, so there's not a lot of uh, wiggle room there for a third candidate to come in. If the Conservatives had about 43% of support in that riding in 2015, it means that Jane Philpot's probably going to have to do a bit better than that as an independent. That's tough to do because it more or less means she needs all of the Liberal vote and maybe some Conservative vote as well. What about in Vancouver? In Vancouver Granville, that is a, maybe a more of an interesting riding for Jody Wilson-Raybould because uh, the NDP finished second there with 27%. So that means that you could theoretically win it with 30, 33%. So that's not a number that would be out of range for someone like J Jody Wilson-Raybould considering uh, her own uh, profile and the fact that she does seem to, at least in some of the polling we've seen, uh, ha have a positive impression people have of her. So she would have a much better chance of coming up in a three or four way race, whereas uh, Jane Philpott more or less needs to win in a two-horse race, which is tough. Greg, they're not just sort of any independents. Obviously, they, their names have become almost household names over the past number of months. Do you think the SNC-Lavalin headlines uh, and their involvement in that story will help or hurt them? Well, I think, I think it'll help as an independent. Um, they're basically arguing it's time to break the mold, to change politics in Ottawa, and that we're the people to do it. And they both have a very strong case to make there. It'll be obviously easier for Jody Wilson-Raybould, who was right in the middle of it, whose name is more closely associated with it. The other thing that Jody Wilson-Raybould has going for her is that uh, the nature of the Vancouver media market is that she's a lot more likely to get attention when Justin Trudeau comes to town than the same is true for her colleague. And for her, we ask people across the country to agree or disagree that uh, the decision to move Jody Wilson-Raybould was essentially a slap in the face to British Columbians. Uh, more people agreed than disagreed across the country, and a majority of British Columbians agreed. So she has an opportunity uh, to make a vote for her be a, a vote for standing up to Ottawa as much as standing up to Trudeau or standing up uh, to, uh, to the powers of be in Ottawa. The bigger challenge that they both have, though, is if what you want is something other than the Trudeau Liberals, it makes more sense to vote for someone that's never been a Trudeau Liberal than someone who was and then left. And so, you know, the argument for change is 
the, the argument that you're making as an independent is not just change parties, but change the whole system. That's a, a pretty difficult message to deliver. It's been successful. So an example of that in BC is a provincial MLA named Vicki Hunting, uh, Huntington. She won two back-to-back -back victories as an independent who was never elected as anything but an independent. So we know that story. It's played before in British Columbia. It could happen again. What about, Eric, something that's sort of unique to this time, and that is uh, something that Greg mentioned, the idea that they're trying to, not capitalize, but that they highlighted in both of their announcements this, that they have received messages that people are sort of over the status quo in Ottawa. They feel dissatisfied with the way that government works, and they're looking for something less partisan uh, and, and more representative of uh, sort of what they believe and, mm -hmm. and uh, not the old way of doing, doing things. Is there polling to support that? I think so. I think that we've seen that there is some uh, dissatisfaction with that kind of thing, and I think that's why we've seen the Green Party have some success and why it would have actually made some sense if they had decided to go with the Green Party, which has often talked about being uh, more independent, more collaborative, cooperative with other parties. So that would have fit within their arguments. Uh, but when we think about, you know, that opens up an opportunity for the Greens to do well nationwide. We're talking about two specific ridings. So it has to be that the people in these two ridings, Markham Stouffville and Vancouver Granville, care enough about that issue for them to elect an independent. We heard uh, that Jody Wilson-Raybould, when she made her announcement, it was very much almost like a national announcement, as if she was running as the leader of a national party of independents. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas when Jane oh, Philpott was speaking, it was much more, a little bit more locally focused, and, and she that might give her a bit more... Um, uh, Maybe she'll get a bit more credibility locally as a local candidate, but um, if people in Vancouver Granville care about climate change, which was one of the big issues that was brought up uh, by Jody Wilson-Raybould, will they go with her or will they go with a Green Party candidate or a Liberal Party that is bringing in uh, legislation on that front? Greg, what Jody Wilson-Raybould said in her press conference today was that she had heard, based on what she has heard from people, she said some 15,000 messages she received, it's clear how we need to do politics differently, that partisanship is trumping, trumping principle, pardon me, that exclusion is trumping inclusion, and the lack of diversity of voices is simply unacceptable. And she also heard there was too much power in the center. How, do you, I mean, we know, we have reported, we have seen that sentiment expressed, for example, in the United States quite frequently in the lead up to uh, President Trump being elected. Do you, how would you compare the level of that feeling here? Does it exist to the same degree? No, it doesn't uh, exist anywhere near the same degree as it exists in the United States. The level of anger uh, that Americans have towards Washington is, in terms of passion, about 20 points higher than the level of anger that we see in Canada. Moreover, the people that are most angry in Canada tend to be coming from the right. So the type of change they want is not at all the type of change that Jody Wilson-Raybould is, is talking about. Um, she's talking about a progressive change and those uh, people that are looking for progressive change already have the choice of the Greens, the New Democrats, and the Liberals, if you listen to the message from the Prime Minister. So she's fighting over a small slice of very contested territory, um, and the, the, the bigger populist pie right now is coming from the right. What about that uh, final question to you, Eric, that progressive vote? What, what kind of risk is there at this point to splitting that mm. based on what we heard today? I think in a riding like Markham Stouffville, there is that risk because there really is only one uh, left of center option for voters there. When you look at the history of the riding, the Greens had only 2% of the vote. The NDP was in single digits as well. But in Vancouver, Granville, the, the vote on the right is perhaps smaller, so there is more of that vote to split. And so that way you could end up seeing an NDP uh, a liberal, Jody Wilson-Raybould, maybe even a Green if they pick up uh, a lot of support, win a riding like that. But in a riding like Markham Stouffville, which is a lot like a lot of the ridings in the GTA, there are two-way races between Liberals and Conservatives. That's where it could uh, hurt the Liberals in particular. But okay. one quick thing okay. about Vancouver Granville is that if you looked at the votes in the pieces that came together in the last election because it's a new seat, the Tories would have won if they had gotten the same share of votes as they got in a previous election campaign. So with another center-left voice fighting um, with the Liberals and the New Democrats, the Tories are going to be rubbing their hands. All right, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much to both of you for your time and insight. Thanks to Eric Grenier and Greg Lyle. In this election, I will be running as an independent candidate. I know that my time in federal politics isn't over. Um, as I said, it's been a unique experience for the last little while sitting as an independent member. I know who I am and I'm not 
a party person. So I am going to run in the federal election as an independent candidate for the people of Markham Stouffville. The only people that are the boss of me right now are you. You, the people of Markham Stouffville, you're the boss of me. After months of speculation, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott unveiled their future political plans. The two former Liberal cabinet ministers will run as independents in the fall federal election. So what are their chances and what impact could their independent runs have on support in their ridings for other parties? Time for the Power Panel in Calgary. Rachel Curran of Harper & Associates and formerly Stephen Harper's policy director. Brad Levine of Council Public Affairs is with us from Toronto. Former Quebec Liberal Cabinet Minister Yolande James is in Montreal. And here with me in studio, the CBC's own John Paul Tasker. Hi, everybody. Hey, Ashley, how are you? you? Yolande, I'm going to start with you. Uh, any surprise on your part that this was the decision they ultimately came to? Um, the, to f the surprise is more so on the rollout that they decided to announce it um, together at the same time. Um, uh, but I'm not. I'm not uh, surprised, certainly with respect to Jody Wilson Raybould's decision to continue on. Uh, there was obviously a lot of discussion and a lot of media attention around the fact that uh, they may uh, run with the Greens. Um, it'll be interesting with the Green Party, which they've decided not to do for various reasons. It'll be interesting to see how this will impact the campaign. I mean, clearly, from the government's perspective, it would have certainly been <laughs> easier had they decided not to um, uh, uh, not to run. Um, at the same time, uh, running as in is an as an independent, um, there are reasons why it's harder to do so. When you run as an independent candidate, you don't obviously uh, have the the resources or the infrastructure of the party uh, uh, of a party uh, <coughs> behind you. I mean. Um, Neither candidate, no, neither Mrs. Uh, Jody Wilson Raybould or or um, uh, Mrs. Philbot can expect to have the same also um, media attention as they benefited from uh, from from January up until now. That'll be a different perspective given that campaigns now, especially in our day, are focused on the leaders, on the narrative, on um, the announcements of the day. Brad, what do you think? What do you think their chances are? Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it, it depends uh, on a lot, but uh, you know, the only good news for the for the Liberal government from today would have been had they announced that they were not running. Uh, it, yeah. By them running, they they will be taking votes from the 2015 Liberal uh, pot of votes, and that can never be good for the Liberals who are uh, down in the in, at this time down in the public domain polls. The only the only good news in it for the Liberals today is is that because they didn't go to another political party. They contain their effect in those just those two ridings. Granted, they're incumbent ridings, but it's just two. Had they gone with an opposition party, uh, they would have given a boost to that party and would have been able to, I think, uh, translate uh, their uh, their their kind of their political uh, relevancy uh, in the upcoming election a, a, a lot Gosh. further. Can't they still take votes though from the NDP as well, from the Greens? Well, I, I, they, they can certainly. I, I think the, 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 the those are liberal seats. So why would you uh, vote for the NDP in 2015 and then switch to an independent uh, to to do what exactly in in, in Vancouver Granville? It, it's less likely. Uh, I think that the. Um, uh, the, the the greatest out, outcome would be that the, 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 if they can get over the top, but I, I thought I thought that Eric and 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 in the pollster on the previous uh, uh, panel were you know had some good insights uh, in terms of what 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 is the likelihood of them winning? They are up again. When when people go to the ballot box in a general election, they are deciding the direction of the country. What the offer that we heard from those two independent candidates was uh, was an option to change the way in which politics is done, mm -hmm. and people took a bet on that in '15 when they voted for. Trump. That turned out to be a false promise. So they've got an uphill climb. Do you agree, Rachel? Uphill climb? It is an uphill climb. I think the two of them will be successful at this, actually. But they were both really interesting statements today. So they were framed in the language of collaboration and cooperation. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do politics differently. And this is what this looks like. Um, it was all about nonpartisanship and consensus. They both said they would work with whichever party was in power to advance their constituents' interests. So they really did seem to be doubling down on this very different way of doing politics. And I think that's smart. 
Um, it really capitalizes on the anti-establishment mood of the moment. I think it works for the two of them because they are both relatively high profile. People know who they are. But look, I agree with Brad and Yolande. Would, will this work more broadly for other candidates or members of parliament who want to run as independents? It definitely is an uphill climb. I mean, look, people vote for parties. We have the party system for a reason. Parties can pool resources to provide policy and communication support, campaign organizational support. It's really difficult to get the profile to be elected as an independent MP. Um, and so I don't, you know, I, while this may work for them as individuals, A, I wouldn't be surprised to see them rejoining a party at some point down the line, perhaps post-Trudeau. Mm. And I also don't think it's something that can be applied uh, more broadly. I do think that MPs, um, look, I have long thought that MPs are too much tools yeah. of the executive um, and tools of the center of government, and I wish there was more uh, support for independent thinking, creative thinking, within the boundaries of party policy, of course. Um, but, you know, it, it, whether that works in practice, um, you know, outside of these two very unique and high profile cases is, I think, a real question. And that was part of the story today, JP, because in both of their press conferences, to, to Rachel's point, they did talk a lot about this idea of it sort of seemed like more they wanted it to be more like a movement versus yeah. their own their yeah. own decision. We we saw uh, Selena Cesar Chavan come out and say that she, she could was jump on the bandwagon. Considering even though in her last statement she said she was not running for yeah. sure, uh, but but to Rachel's qu uh, point and, and the question I guess is whether that will actually become the case. Is this it, are people going to are people at the point where they're so fed up with things that they want more than just two MPs making that decision? The pollster off the top didn't think, for example, that well that was the case. We could be looking at a problem for the Liberals. Could there could be even more splintering on the left. We could mm. have the NDP, the Greens, and the JWR slash JP party <laughs> because it seems like they're trying to start a movement, right? And they're really talking about democratic reform. They really had a lot to say today about reforming the role of the member of parliament and kind of, you know, making that front and center more than it is right now. But I, one thing that really stuck out for me is she said that politics shouldn't be a blood sport. And, and I agree, but it is similar to a sport in that there are teams involved. You know, the very foundation of the Westminster parliamentary democracy are political parties because you can't just have loan operators pushing pet projects. You need to have big tent parties with big ideas to solve. And mm -hmm. she mentioned Indigenous communities, she mentioned the Northwest Territories, but in all fairness, those are very different than a G7 country with a $2 trillion economy and 35 million people. You need parties to organize people and ideas. You can't just sit there in the chamber and push transit projects for Vancouver Granville, for example, something she also mentioned. Mm -hmm. You need to be part of a team. You need to push big ideas to solve the problems of our of our day, and I think climate change can't be solved by two independent backbenchers. Well, it's interesting on climate change. I mean, that was where they they identified in both their press conferences. They mm -hmm. they talked about Elizabeth May and the the climate policies of the Green Party. They I think J, uh, Jody Wilson Raybould said that they were natural allies, something to that effect. So then all of a sudden, everyone starts asking yeah. Elizabeth May, "Hey, what happened? Why why didn't it work out?" I want to play a clip of what she said today about the possibility of them joining. Let's listen. I said to Jody in our first conversation, you know, are you interested in being leader of the Green Party? I think that'd be a great idea. She said no. So I really don't think you can keep that. that uh, there's not a lot here to find that isn't on the surface. It's hard for people to quite understand the extent to which this wasn't a negotiation. I didn't, other than saying in my first conversation, do you want to be leader? And she said no. So you can put to bed any idea that she had leadership aspirations. Yolan, this was so interesting. It so. took a lot of us by surprise, right? Because she said, I said, hey, do you want to be, yeah. do you guys want to be <laughs> leader? Apparently they I'll said no. Aside. Yeah, what did you think when you heard that? Well, I was, I was a little surprised at how easily she, that she was willing to, to offer that. But at the same time, in a, in a following response that she gave in France, she did um, um, recall that she had always been, and, and I do remember her doing that, open to stepping aside um, if she felt that there's another uh, candidate that would be uh, uh, better suited for leadership. But coming in and in a structured party and just offering leadership mm -hmm. like that, I would imagine the members of the party would kind of be like, hmm, I'm not too sure about that, as popular as Ms. Wilson-Raybould uh, and, and uh, Ms. Philpott could be to their members. But it, it just just brings to, to the point that, and I know that it's maybe not what's not a la mode right now, um, but being part of any political party does 
require compromise and compromising is not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To move things forward. And one of the challenges that both of them will have or any other independent um, candidate will have is being able to respond to the question that all the people that would potentially vote for them would asking, how am I better served by having an independent MP representing me in the House of Commons mm -hmm. than X, Y, or Z, who's part of a, a party and has the opportunity to move uh, whatever policies are dear to my heart further well, as a part of government. There's also only been four independent MPs elected since the 1970s, and the vast majority of them, I think only Bill Casey's the one exception, don't get reelected again. Mm -hmm. It might be a one-off. They might be able to run against the party banner one time, but they often don't get reelected. And that might say something about how good, how able they are to serve their constituents in government on Parliament Hill by being a lone operator. It just doesn't really work that well. What about the actual, uh, Brad, I mean, you've done a lot of campaigns. What about the actual campaign aspect of this? They, you heard, uh, for example, Jane Philpott reference it pretty specifically in her speech saying, I'm going to need money, I'm going to need people to help me, I'm not going to be able to give you a tax receipt. Like, yeah. there are some realities that they will have to face. Yeah, there, there, there are, and obviously the, you know, the, the local legal limit will have to be, to be spent. It'll have to be a heavy ground game. Uh, those are both very expensive markets, uh, so it'll, it'll be door-to-door -door, um, uh, literature and social media uh, targeted to those specifics. I don't think that uh, you know Dr. Jane Philpott's going to be able to afford ads on Toronto radio or television. Uh, even political parties, uh, some, some political parties can't even afford that. So mm. it's going to be names. very local, we won't <laughs> very localized uh, campaign. But it speaks to a larger issue. I mean, you, you can't be everywhere. Uh, you're going to have to have obviously a network of team. And, and to be to be fair to to these two folks today, uh, they, they they probably do have a good on the ground uh, organizations. The question becomes: Can you sustain the that 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 newness or that novelty of voting for a independent MP when you're when when everything when every other channel at your at, that you're accessible to is talking about what we're going to do about pharmacare, what we're going to do yep. about indigenous mm -hmm. and and so when you get when you get to those conversations, the ballot question. Uh, they're counting today, and, and, and while it's a busy day in Ottawa and in politics across the country, they're, they're, they're gonna, uh, their best news day is going to be today. But to sustain that ballot question, do you want to change the system and have consensus and those, all those values that they put forward today, you want to sustain that for another six months while all the other political parties and millions of dollars are all going to be talking about very, uh, very different other things is going to be a challenge for them. Rachel, quick final word to you. Yeah, I agree with, with everything Brad said. Like, there are studies that show people vote for parties and leaders. They don't vote for individuals. Only a very small minority of people vote for individuals. So it is going to be tough for both of them. Running for office is a very expensive and difficult proposition. On the Green Party side, look, I think there's more to the story there. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, the rest of that story. Yes. But I'm not sure that there was a there was an offer of a straight transfer of power to Jody Wilson-Raybould from, from Elizabeth May. And look, I think, would have been delayed still, a bit. I think I think even Elizabeth May said that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And look, yeah. the Green Party is still very much a fringe <laughs> party. It's quite possible that Jody Wilson Raybald and Jane Philpott have more power or have more ability to influence the agenda as independents working with a mm. liberal minority or conservative minority government than they do as MPs with the Green Party. The overwhelming message I received was clear. Clear how we need to do politics differently. That partisanship is trumping principle, that exclusion is trumping inclusion, and the lack of diversity of voices was simply unacceptable. And there is too much power in the center. There is no longer a political party telling me what to say. There's no longer a political staffer telling me how to vote. There are no longer corporate lobbyists that are influencing the direction that I would go. The only people that are the boss of me right now are you. <laughs> Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott will run in the upcoming federal election as independents. The two former Liberal cabinet ministers made back-to-back -back announcements in each of their respective ridings earlier this afternoon. Oh.
pledging to do politics differently. Both women quit cabinet over the SNC-Lavalin controversy. Wilson-Raybould had alleged members of the prime minister's inner circle inappropriately pressured her to intervene in a criminal case against the engineering giant. They were later expelled from caucus by the, by the prime minister, who said they had broken his trust. So what kind of odds do they face this fall? Since 1974, <laughs> only four MPs have been successfully re-elected as independents after leaving their parties or being booted from them. John Nunziata is one of them. He joins us now from Toronto. Hi, Mr. Nunziata. Great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Let Thank me ask. You. Let me just ask for your initial reaction when you heard that they were going to run as independents. What did you think? I was very happy to hear that. Uh, I encouraged them uh, a number of uh, months ago when they were booted from caucus to do so, um, and I'm convinced they're going to win. Did you speak with them? Uh, no, but I uh, messaged them on uh, Twitter and social media and. Uh, I'm satisfied that the people in both ridings are fed up with party politics, they're fed up with the current Prime Minister, uh, and they don't believe that their MP should be trained SEALs in Ottawa, uh, as Jody and Jane said, to uh, take instructions from the Prime Minister's office on how to vote. People should, there should be, every vote should be independent in the House of Commons. So, so what about the idea, I mean, there had been a lot of speculation that they perhaps would join the Green Party. Why would you advocate for being an independent over doing so? I think uh, party politics uh, in Canada uh, simply is not working, whether it's the Green Party, the Conservatives, the Liberals, the NDP, it's all the same. The, the power is in the centre, uh, elected MPs are, are told what to do, uh, they must tow the party line. Now if elected as uh, independents, uh, and it's a close election, and let's assume others are elected as independents, they could hold the balance of power in a minority government situation. And that would be uh, outstanding in my view. Let me play devil's advocate for a second because I take your point that there, that this idea that there is a lot of power in the centre, that they have to toe the party line. Uh, isn't the party, though, putting forward a platform in an election that Canadians then vote on? Like, we know where where that party stands. We know in general terms what to expect so that if you want the direction of your country to go a certain way, you'll vote for that party. Is that, isn't that not really what, what we anticipate? Well, we really don't live in a true democracy. In the last election, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau received, I believe, 39 percent of the vote and only 68 percent of Canadians voted. That means that uh, 61 percent of those who voted, voted against the Liberal Party, their platform, their leader, uh, yet given our democracy, one person is given 100 percent of the power. And there's no doubt in my mind, I was there for 20 years, that this country is run by, in a majority government situation, half a dozen people, half of whom are not elected. Every time there's a re referendum lately, though, in this country, in either PEI or in uh, BC, for example, on democratic reform, because I think that's what you're alert, alluding to, it doesn't it doesn't go ahead. Does that well, does that say something about what people really want? Well, I think people really want a member of parliament that represents their interests, not the interests of the party, because not all ridings are the same across the country. Let's take gun control, for example. Uh, there are many ridings where the majority of people um, in, in rural areas, they want to have the ability to own guns and they don't believe in strict gun controls. If you're from a city, that's different. But they're told how to vote. And in a true democracy, MPs should vote according to the wishes of their constituents. And um, that's what I was able to do as an independent uh, in my last term in Ottawa and, and seek the opinion of my constituents. And then when I stood up to vote, I would always say on behalf of the residents of York Southwestern, I vote for or against a particular measure. If you're a member of a political party, uh, the party whip, and notice the, uh, the phrase, the, the whip, because they carry a whip, they tell you how to vote. And if you don't vote, you don't get to go on trips, you don't get to speak in the House of Commons, you're disciplined. And in my case, I was removed from the Liberal caucus by Mr. Chrétien, and he sarcastically uh, wished me luck running as an independent that day. And on election night, the first person I thanked was uh, Mr. Chrétien for wishing me luck. You, you did win, uh, of course, as an independent, as, as we said in the intro there, one of, uh, one of four. But you were defeated uh, by a Liberal when you sought re-election. 
It, yeah. what, what does that say, do you think? And I, and I know you're obviously, you, you were in it, but if you take a step back, what does that say? Does that say to, I mean, is it, is it somehow the promise cannot be delivered on this idea that you can fully represent your constituents if you're independent isn't perhaps actually uh, the full truth at the end of the day? Actually, in the 2000 election, my heart went, wasn't in it. I wasn't really trying because uh, I had uh, I, I ran for mayor of Toronto, and so I, I really wasn't interested in getting reelected. Um, but having said that, uh, if you represent your constituents, uh, uh, they truly um, will support you. And if if you represent them and help them with uh, their causes, um, yes, I think give. A, the animosity or the uh, the rejection of political parties today I think is giving rise to the potential for more independent uh, candidates to win. Uh, we know what's happening with the Green Party. Uh, they seem to be have momentum and a lot of people thought that Jody and Jane would join the Green Party. You had uh, Green members elected in different provincial legislatures. Uh, so there is uh, clear evidence out there that People are not happy with the party system in Canada. Given the campaign, the campaigning of late, the political system, all that kind of stuff, I know you're still familiar with the way things are run politically. Uh, how, what, what do you think the most difficult aspect of the campaign will be for them? How much of a challenge, for example, based on your experience, will be uh, raising money, you know, organization, media, especially in, for example, Jane Philpott's writing, which is right in the 905? Well, I was able to raise more, way more money than I, uh, I was uh, allowed to spend in the election. And I think independent MPs can be more effective. Why? Because there are procedural matters in the House of Commons that requires unanimous consent. And so I worked out a deal with the Speaker and the House leaders of the political parties. I said, well, if I'm allowed to ask two questions a week in question period to speak to every bill that's introduced in the House of Commons and to participate on, on several committees, I will give consent uh, when you need unanimous consent to adjourn the House early or to bypass some of the procedural uh, elements. So uh, Jody and uh, Jane can do the same as independents. They can have uh, far more um, influence than a trained seal that's required to toe the party line, as most MPs are certainly on the, on the governing side. Uh, during that mandate, um, when Mr. Kretien was Prime Minister, every vote was considered a vote of confidence. In other words, you have to vote what, uh, according to what the Prime Minister's office wants you to vote because otherwise you're showing uh, disrespect and you don't have confidence in the government. But in reality, you're showing confidence in the people that elected you. And I've always believed that if in every riding across the country people voted for the best candidate, set aside uh, political parties, you vote for the best candidate, you're going to get the best government and find another way of uh, choosing a, a prime minister because now when there's a sweep in or a sweep out, uh, all kinds of, you recall that election where four McGill students were elected as uh, New Democratic MPs and there was one waitress that was never set foot um, in, the, uh, in the riding where she was elected. Clearly people were just voting party politics there and they didn't vote for the best candidates because uh, she ended up being an incredibly productive MP well she could have yes but I, I'm saying in, in many cases yeah, when right. when a political party is swept out of office like in 1993 when um, every conservative candidate was swept out except for Jean Charest and Elsie Wayne was the only other MP to be elected a conservative MP there were a lot of good um, solid MPs on the conservative side that deserve to be re-elected and that would provide for uh, effective government in Canada. So uh, voting along party lines does not guarantee you're going to have the best members of parliament elected. And I think, Can and that's probably one of the reasons why in the last federal election, 32% of those eligible to vote didn't bother voting. Right. I I've always advocated mandatory voting. Uh, they do it in Australia. They should do it here. Yeah, another debate for another time. I'm out of time this time, though. Thank you so much, Mr. Nunziata. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.